24th of June, Antonio Machado, Proverbs and Canticles, 26th of July, 1875, 22nd of February, 1939, RIP. A major, or should that be major, M-E-J-O-R, Spanish poet, Antonio Machado, grew up in Madrid, where his father was a professor but after the latter's sudden death, Machado, or perhaps Machado, and his brother tried to bring money into the family through the rather unreliable professions of writing and acting. They both eventually travelled to Paris, where Antonio met Oscar Wilde, and where they worked as translators at a publishing house from that from that point on, Antonio alternated between living in Spain and France, teaching and studying French and philosophy for an advanced degree. His poems, such as this one, are known for their engagement with existential questions and for commenting on the solitary life of the poet. Proverbs and Canticles 1. The mode of dialogue, my friends, is first to question, then attend. 2. I have seen in my solitude very clear things that are not true. 3. The poet does not pursue the fundamental, I, but the essential, you. Four, let us give time to time, that the vessel overflow, first you must let the water brim. Five, in writing verses, seek to give them a double light, one to read swear by, one oblique. Six, let it not signify whether they pass from hand to hand, from gold men make a currency. Seven. This, to ponder, a heart that solitary is a heart no longer. <laughs> just share on um, one of Reem's latest reads I think it was the Capricorn um, she mentions England and London um, and she met that we watched that or it came out after we had just um, done the poem which says about London and England I'm not sure which one um, it is um, one before the the 20, one before the 21st um, oh yeah 20th of June so it was yesterday's but this is obviously um, this is the 24th so it wasn't yesterday for this it's the 20th four days ago today's a hugely important day because it's um, the 666 portal closing the addition um, addition is expansion subtraction is contraction Division is infinite contraction and multiplication is infinite expansion. And then on the infinite expansion and infinite contraction, you have it with boundaries, which means it, it gets multiplied um, or divided into a whole integer. Um, or you've got without boundaries, it's a number that's just continuous and keeps on going to infinity. Um, so yeah, it's the 666 portal closing and we're very aligned with that because we live at house number 66 and so this poem she also said about London and then Paris 
Um, and so that's just interesting that we're reading this now after that and this is how the connections are made for us and put together um, we also believe that tapping and this is what we shared with the younger ones I mean we've got to do a lot more of whatever it is we, we're going to end up doing to bring this all together so there's a massive amount of integrity and impeccability because we know the harm that can happen to um, if there isn't this clarity of awareness and understanding um, before sharing, um, especially to people that are super hypersensitive and empaths um, and very vulnerable because they've experienced a lot of trauma, because their deep inner aspects of selves will be these stunted generational consciousness of different child state egos. Um, and if there's a lot of other lack of self-worth and lack of self-esteem um etc and a lot of suicidal ideation stuff like this can be the final thing for the basket and the basket gets too heavy and there's a tipping point and we have all kinds of um suicide rates raising and everything like that in mental health and so we take this very seriously (laughs) um we also take it very seriously because of first-hand experience so rather than the people that aren't sensitive being um, judgmental and critical saying man up strengthen up don't be so sensitive we can learn from each other we can understand that the people that are sensitive I have a, an, a massive a beautiful gift of being able to connect into the unseen subtle energetic world easier um, and the people that aren't sensitive can learn from this and it doesn't need to be learned from a mental mind of words and logical traditional academic learning and knowledge it's learned from the electromagnetic fields it's learned from just being in the presence of others and just watching and observing knowing that when we're attempting to understand ourselves one way is by understanding other people's processes to understand our own processing model but that really our own processing model might be very different so in the understanding other says others processing and questioning that to be like well what is that us or not and that's what we did for the majority of our life <laughs> um, and then we had to go it alone and we've got a really complex processing model because each one of us has a different processing model and they're at completely ends of the spectrum um, so there is no um, set path or routine on the surface level or formula that's going to work for it but when you get down to the deep deep subtle energetics there is a fundamental formula that works for it and that's what we're attempting to find out we're attempting to find out because each of us have different dreams and wants and needs but we're finding attempting to find out the energies that overlap between all of us different alternate personalities and I think we've found that out a lot and now what we're doing is learning to put the words to that um, which is the hardest part and that's what we're still navigating but we're doing a lot better and just like the people that aren't sensitive can learn from the sensitive the sensitive can learn from the the ones that aren't sensitive to know how to put up their boundaries and understand that when we feel other people's stuff we only feel it because there's frequencies in us that are resonant with that and it's normally the dissonant ones because we don't we take ourselves away from what we call toxic people and there aren't toxic people there are toxic alchemization between the energetics of different people where they don't harmonize anymore but it's not the other person that's toxic and the way that we we use language the way that we communicate the way that we express the way that we talk it all needs to change so that we stop blaming the other and take responsibility and accountability for ourselves and understand that if if we are resonating to the collective dissonant frequencies it's because we've got dissonant frequencies in ourselves that needs our attention and awareness and love 
um, so that it can be cleared. And this, again, doesn't need to be done from the mental body, like the conventional counselling and talking therapy. It can all just be done through primal sounding, primal movement, um, but not a conscious mind primal sounding, a primal movement. It's not intentional. It's an instinctive, just what happens. And that's what the whole processes of our videos right from the start have been, just letting the surrendering to our alternate personality which are our body and surrendering to the process so that we can then look back, watch, observe and um, bring it all in together into a, a, a symphony in an orchestra where everything harmonises but it's not just one orchestra, it's many orchestras harmonising together because if one listens to music from Vietnam or Thailand um as a Westerner, when we went to the water puppet show, it sounds like the it almost sounds like the music's out of tune because our ears not attuned to it. But it's not out of tune. So it's about bringing all these different orchestras from different cultures together to form a beautiful harmonic symphony of an orchestra between dissonant and harmonic sounds. And for us, that's what consciousness is. That's what God is. That's the it's the unseen energetics that then gets expressed, learning to harmonise itself all together, including all variations. Um, so the more that we get to know ourselves and understand ourselves, we know what's ours and what is, isn't ours, um, the more we can have healthy boundaries put up. And these healthy boundaries, it's not just mental conceptualizations; it's in the body. If the body doesn't have um, slightly defined muscle tone or all the muscles there, um, then you can look at someone and see whether they've got healthy boundaries in their life or not with people, food, just life in general, different aspects, because our body tells us everything. Our facial expressions tell us everything. Um, and this is all the reflex points and our reflexology and all our different therapies that we've put together because each altar links to a different one. Um, and so this is what where Shinto size come about from. Um, so yeah, we're the anomaly of the anomaly, the rare of the rare, and we're finding a unique healing package that incorporates many different aspects from different cultures and all around and using the physical body, mental body, heart body, sexual body, etc., vocal body, to bring it all into one package, because this is what we're using to heal us. So whatever one thinks by watching our videos, thinks we're doing, we're not creating videos like whatever it seems we're creating, and that's been challenging for us even to figure out. Um... We're creating the tools that we need to heal ourselves because we've not been able to find that from anyone else or anywhere else. And it's working. It's slow. It's hard. It's long. It's isolating. It's lonely. But we're turning that loneliness into a loneliness and we're loving ourselves more and more every day. And this is a pure, real-time reality documentary of us navigating some of the most challenging, hardest aspects of life and being completely authentic and vulnerable and strong in that vulnerability and courageous by sharing it all and allowing people to witness our process because if they are able to watch it or experience it or listen to it without getting uncomfortable no, that's, the, that's not appropriate language, that we've been able to sit with the discomfort and been able to feel behind what it seems on the surface, then they will observe, they will observe but they will absorb these healing frequencies because it's like that, the, the people we surround ourselves with, the things that we do are what we become, the food we eat is what we become. And we're having to be hugely impeccable with our food. We don't, we're mainly plant-based now, but we don't even eat nightshade apart from blueberries because it raises our physical pain. And the most important thing has been for us to diversify, heal 
and keep healthy and going is our gut biobacteria and the other bacteria because that's what makes up the rest of our body and they're all our different alternate personalities speaking to us attempting to communicate to us and I know consciousness and all of this has found it really challenging as well because of our faulty healing with our connective tissue and our fascia and our Ellos Danlos syndrome and all the scar tissue and how these nerve impulses and these neurological pathways they don't communicate like the average typical person and our head injuries on the back left and that's the masculine organisation and we've been finding organisation and all structure all that thing really challenging but we're getting better the house is never completely tidy or clean we're just constantly dancing on that but it's closer to that now than it is to a mess and when there's is a mess in the kitchen it's normally a mess of clean stuff that needs to be put away rather than dirty stuff that needs to be washed so we're really learning to balance it all and it's chop word carry water we've done lots of meditations and all that other stuff it's all to be witnessed our whole process is to be witnessed um yeah we, we're on it talking at the moment aren't we so we'll read the poem <laughs> <sighs> and so yes you get all the healing frequencies in the tone of our words and the most important thing isn't what we're saying and what we're conveying the most important thing is the frequencies that we're putting out so that the viewer the watcher the listener the friend whoever absorbs those frequencies through their electromagnetic field and then however long it takes if it's this life or not if it's quick fast slow whatever is what they need and what's in their best interests because we need to treat and care for people dif people differently and that starts by treating and caring for ourselves differently and we need to be able to understand and learn what other people's needs are especially ones that are in desperate desperate vulnerable life-threatening situations um where they aren't able to communicate because sometimes we communicate and if it sounds like they're able to communicate because they're saying words when we're in our body and when we're in our heart and when we're in this real strong self-knowing we can tell whether the words of what the other is saying is true or not and one of our first glimpses of this is um, an old friend that used to say they were OK, they were OK. And the more they insisted they were OK, the more they weren't. And we realised then that that's what we did. Because we've grown up never been able to, never have been experienced or interacting, communicating about our emotions or feelings or needs. Um, and so much more. Um, so we've never been able to do that. And the ones that do do it now that are learning are very young and aren't great with their words. Um, and sometimes what we say isn't what we mean or isn't what we want to say, but we don't even know that ourselves. And a lot of the time, and we only know this from checking up on what we've written and what we say, we will put in, we'll say can instead of can't or cannot or vice versa, we'll say, we'll say can't instead of can, and it completely changes the understanding of what we're saying. So the more that we get to know ourselves and the more that we live from a heart-centered, balanced management life, the more we can be there for how other people need in their most desperate times. And we we'll also know that if that person is really desperate, um, but we're not able to help them because it's pushing our own boundaries and limitations because we know what that's like, then we don't step in because then stepping in and being in that person's environment, especially if they're an empath and a super hypersensitive person or a highly sensitive person or a hyper highly sensitive person, they will be absorbing the energies of the others. Parents that can't handle their children, their children are just a reflection of their internal reality that they are in denial about. When certain senses get cut off, I know there's someone that we know whose child's sense of smell has got cut off, that that's because that child 
The consciousness of that child is cutting off one of the sensory systems so that it doesn't absorb any more energy. When there's a lot of information in the um, in the nose sense, I don't know what you'd um, call it, but in smelling, there's a lot of information that comes in in that animal smell first. Um, so to have that cut off helps separate and not absorb other people's energy and other people's shit. So the more we work out our own shit and clear our own shit, the less we'll affect others with it, especially the ones that absorb the energy like a sponge because it's like Gore-Tex material or di there's so many different types of plastic or different types of material out there and humans are just like that. We're nature. Some absorb, some can, let, some are more water resistant and the water can just fall off. Others will absorb that water. Some will let water in but not out. Others will let water out but not in. So yeah, um, we're sharing a lot. Bye.